Come closer, come closer, come closer. Maya's just trying to get at the beginning part again. <laughs> it's her yeah, goal in every episode. It's her goal. All right, ready and action. Welcome to Chicks Dig Flicks episode 12. Oh, you well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Chicks Dig Flicks episode 12. I guess we'll start it off with introductions. Yes. I'm Rosie. I'm Anna. I'm Maya. And today we're going to be talking a lot about the Oscars. Oscar week. This mm-hmm. Sunday. Um, and I guess we'll start with news. Yeah, let's start with news. Right. So, <laughs> this piece of news. Um, the Oscars, the Oscar movies have gotten more Oscar y recently. <laughs> I love that headline. I love that headline too. And, um, it's just Oscar dash Y. That's how they spell it. Oscar y. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, this is based on a sociology study. Um, and it basically said that the four main genre categories, which are biography, drama, history, and war for um, Oscar-nominated movies, have just been getting bigger, more. They're They're taking um, over. Are combined. Um, Yeah, I liked the thing they said that, like, imitation game is, like, all four categories. (laughs) Biography, (laughs) drama, history, and war. (laughs) Judge Oscar bait. Judge Oscar bait, yeah. I don't know, like, does Oscar bait, you know... Um, is Oscar bait bad? Is it good? You know, sometimes I think it's, you know, some of these Oscar baits sometimes don't get nominated at all. Like, I feel like The Butler was such a huge Oscar Mm. bait because it did, like, it's funny because that film did, like, 60 years worth of, like, really intense, like, you know, African-American history. I mean, there's also those, like, doing African-American history, but, like, it just still was, like, complete Oscar bait. I feel like... it didn't get any nominations, which was something that would set up, especially because it was beloved by a lot of people it was seen by a lot of people people were kind of rooting for this film so i don't know last year they were like oh only only one movie about african-american history can be on the oscar (laughs) nomination (laughs) yeah (laughs) come on out of time guys one at a time this is slow crazy i thought i thought this article had a lot of interesting points um one of which was that you know, Hollywood makes the exact right amount of Oscar bait movies mm-hmm. and to kind of like balance itself out. Mm-hmm. Um, and the idea that um, if we didn't have the Oscars, then we would just have, well, I don't like the way they put it. They said we would have less depressing and challenging movies. Mm-hmm. Like that would be the result. I, I don't know if depressing I Depressing and that. challenging? I think, mm-hmm. yeah. But I, I think... One yeah. of the problems with this is that it's it's kind of saying that all the movies that aren't aren't Oscar bait are necessarily not challenging in any way, which I disagree with, and I've had this fight with my dad a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, where you know, just because a movie is popular doesn't mean that it doesn't have oh like, sure something to say. Sure, sure, so. sure. Mm-hmm. I feel like usually the Oscar bait movies are popular, though. I don't know, maybe not like Lincoln. Which was like I felt like the I biggest. Thought, I thought Oscar that movie. was really popular. Like, really, it like I thought big, people were like. Especially, I think maybe because of the gimmick. There's so many gimmicks that come with now Oscar bait movies that like, and the Oscar movies in general that like, you know, take it to this new level. I mean, gimmicks can be good, if, especially if they take the gimmick and make it good. Like you know, that's like if they take it and do something with it. Mm-hmm. So it's funny because Lincoln, the whole gimmick of that was Daniel Day Lewis was not in he was in character the whole entire time and he sent text messages as Abraham Lincoln. And that was his whole <laughs> that was his whole thing. Like that was like every single you know what is it question was him like <laughs> how like how are you in character for that long? Like that, you know Yeah. So and, my point, but. <laughs> and so um, one of the other points that kind of leads into our next piece of news um, is the idea that we kind of have a problem with all of our Oscar bait movies getting released at the same mm-hmm. time. And so the Vulture had proposed a, an alternate idea, which is seated nominations, 
meaning that um, they would have categories like based on seasons and um, you have one nominated from like the spring season, one nominated from the fall season, um, and then I guess there were, was it five categories or something, and then one kind of, or four and then one wild card. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. That seems more like how they do like, I don't know, I probably don't know anything about this, but isn't that how they do like sports yeah, things? Yeah, that was, that was the okay. inspiration. I like how it says, um, furthermore, adding additional nominees, whether eight, nine, or ten, hasn't made the race more exciting. It's simply created more clutter. Yeah, which that's Which is true. so true, which is like... It sucks when you have five films and you can only, you know, dedicate five films as the best films of the year. But that's the whole but point. But it's the whole point of being the best <laughs> film, even if it's not, you know, agreeable. We still, like, everyone's arguing still about the it's ten nominees, like, yeah. you know? It's true. Yeah, because then we made it ten, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, my God, like, this movie didn't get it after, like, ten? And, like, now they're doing it the whole, like, not ten, but whatever scale it is, because this year it's eight. Mm-hmm. Usually it's nine for these past couple of years they've had it, and then it's been ten the first year. So, I mean... It, it's it's you know I, I think that's what I think they need to ch- change that because it does get hard do you like because I was like do the, sh- should they double every nomination because they've made award like you know the best films 10 because oh, directors that's yeah. always what gets really tough it's like yeah. every time they have a director you can only pick five and how can you have you know a best picture but not the best director or a best right. director exactly. you know like you know vice versa and so I was like, but that just gets so much. Like, if you just think about, like, every, like, just, like, ten more people, like, five more people added to each category, and then more bullshit that comes with the Oscar race in general. I feel like everyone, like, in Hollywood would be wiped out completely. That, like, you know, people would start, like, filing, like, through the cracks. Because they'll just start nominating anyone that they think is really Oscar-dominated. Which they already do sometimes, so... Anyway, <laughs> would you guys would you guys get behind the seated the seated nomination suggestion? Um, yeah, I think I would. I, I mean, they make a, a good point in the article um, that the two reasons to release your movie at Christmas are so that the Academy members remember you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I so like that, that. You can you know have your movie will still be in theaters if you win, and then you can use that as a marketing tool to get mm-hmm. more people. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I like the seated one. Yeah, I like it, the mm-hmm. idea a lot. I think because I mean now it's it was really interesting that the Grand Budapest Hotel this year came out in March has still how much like yeah. how much like you know push. Boyhood came out in June. Well, it came out January. Came out in June to the public. Still has a lot of you know push and marketing. So. I mean, I would rather have them earlier, like spread them out, yeah. so I can feel so not I can see so. Them. Yeah, so you can see them, so you're not overwhelmed by yeah. you know packing yourself into a theater, <laughs> like because I spent a lot of money, especially during. I mean, I spent a lot of money during summer season, but I spent a lot of money during the Oscar season because then um, you have all everything coming out. It'll and, probably be better for the theaters making money too, so the theaters aren't just making money in December. Yeah, I think but. so. I think they should come out. Of course, they have all their blockbusters in the yeah. summer. But. I think they should, like, there should be a group of them come out in June that we can, like, you know, have some, you know, really good quality movies in June with all the, like, explosions that are happening. Yeah. And then we get some in, you know, like, September, you know, back to school. <laughs> Just, like, every, like, national, yeah, like, every national holiday, we, like, like, national month or whatever. I don't know. Just movie time. Just October. Time. Halloween. Just throw one out on Halloween. <laughs> Yeah. So instead of Thanksgiving, which <laughs> usually happens, I don't know. That's true. I think Adam Sternberg, author of this article from Vulture, have Chick Stig Flick's approval. <laughs> so go but ahead and. That's, <laughs> that's the same. <laughs> um, should we move on? Yeah. yeah. So in other movie news, Melissa McCarthy and Kristen Bell are going to be in a movie together. I'm excited. I am, yeah, I'm, I'm really, I'm down. This. <laughs> this sounds really interesting. And Melissa McCarthy's husband is um, directing it, and Bates oh. is going to be in it. Okay. Peter Dinklage, wow. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like. Yeah. The name of the movie is Michelle Darnell. Yes. Is it like a, another like slapstick character comedy? Like with Tammy? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't actually know. This is the um, first that I'm, I'm hearing of it. Um, same. I just found this but, random article. <laughs> that, that does seem like her shtick now. Yeah, the, the, the name seems comical enough 
since it rhymes. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, let's see. She's America's latest sweetheart with the help of a former assistant. Not everyone she screwed over is so quick to forgive and forget. Oh, I, for- I missed the first half of that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Eh, it sounds interesting. Hmm. I don't know what else to say, but I will. Anything I can see it. Yeah. yeah. Anything with more um, Melissa McCarthy like doing stuff. Like. Seriously, what did I just? What was she just in that I saw? We saw the trailer for Spy. Oh yeah, that's probably what I'm thinking of. <laughs> I thought that I just saw that whole movie, but no, that was good. Good trailer. Yeah. All right. Um, next piece of. <laughs> I don't never, okay, so uh, apparently the board game Settlers of Catan uh, is going to be turned into a film. I think it's pronounced or Settlers Catan. of Catan. Catan. <laughs> <laughs> I've never played it. I don't know. Um, I, I actually have also never played it. I don't it. even know. I've watched people movie. play it. It looks boring. It seems like you like build. <laughs> oh, it does look boring. <laughs> it's like one of those things that like, you know, like the guys that play like Magic the Gathering and the other games. It's Nerdy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say <laughs> she, she said like mm. <laughs> I don't want to offend our listeners. <laughs> She's just like, what's up? All you nerds out there. Nerds it's fine. Play it's fine. The yeah, we're nerds too. Just You guys are nerds in different ways and that's fine. This seems like a fun board game. Is it? No, it looks boring. <laughs> um, but like you make houses and you build things. You settle. Like you settle. You're a, set- you're a settler. Oh, in my life, you know, I'm just settling. <laughs> I don't know what that movie would be like. It seems just like an American so settler movie. And, like so white. That's just. So- yeah, I'm imagining. I'm imagining like a really boring Lord of the Rings. Like oh, it's God. like the setting and characters of Lord of the Rings, but everyone just kind of settles. That sounds really boring. I'm sorry. <laughs> Players build settle- settlements, cities, and roads to connect them as they or establish uh, connects their establishing colonies, and then <laughs> they just kind of build. They're just settling resources. They're represented by resource cards, and I don't know. I mean, I was I'm sure they'll like, create some conflict for the film. I guess. I mean, you know, you wouldn't think that the game of life would be interesting, and yet it is. Or Sims, where you're just. Living. Yeah, it's like, I think it's similar to that, except a board game. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I don't know if I'll see that, if it if it happens. It's a, it's a rumor so far, I, I think. I feel like it would be a better TV show. I don't know why, but I do. Just, like, people settling. <laughs> <laughs> well, like you said, I'm sure they would need some content. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're talking about this. I agree. <laughs> we don't even know what's happening. Um, moving on to Fifty Shades of Grey, my Always. favorite <laughs> book and movie. <laughs> that you haven't seen or read. The second. <laughs> I read the first chapter. Oh, really? Did not buy it. I downloaded it. Um, it's awful. <laughs> someone who's read a lot of fic, and this, if you don't know, Fifty Shades of Grey is based on a Twilight fan fiction. Mm-hmm. Is Which I've read. Truly mm-hmm. horrid writing. Um, and it's also... We won't get too much into the politics, but it's pretty abusive narrative and just, yeah, I, I'm not a fan at all. Yeah. But the movie news is that E.L. James, who is the writer of Fifty Shades of Grey, is demanding script control on the next, the sequel, the next movie. That's a little, uh, I don't know. I'm just like, what more do you want, E.L. James? <laughs> you wrote a fan fiction and now you're making millions of dollars off of it. Yeah. <laughs> and as I was saying before, I don't. Like JK Rowling didn't even yeah. any of the screenplay. And I'm I don't even I don't think Stephanie Meyer did either. No, I know that um didn't Jillian Flynn write the screenplay for Gone Girl? Yeah. Yeah. So that's one. But okay. she did a good job. John Green did Fault in Our Stars. Mm-hmm. But Did he? I thought someone else did he do Oh maybe maybe he was doing Paper Towns. He wrote one I remember he was writing a screenplay. I think the people who did Spectacular Now wrote um The Fault in Our You're Stars. You're probably right. But he was writing a screenplay for some, did, one of his books. I think he did books. Looking for Alaska. Oh, and then, he did, and then it never he, got made. Yeah, it never got made. And then... Probably because they had junk me. <laughs> <laughs> no, now like, they, all of a sudden <laughs> they want to do all this... Oh, okay. I was wrong. They Scratch will. that from the record. <laughs> 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 they want to do all his films now. Check. Like after. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I... I just feel like I like this. I thought this article was funny because it's like the film or the filmmakers were like not wanting to do that. <laughs> they're like, Good I'm no. just imagining E.L. James being like, "Can I write this?" And they're like, "Oh no." <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
no. <laughs> yeah, like already they know it's bad. Yeah. That they like really do they really want to give her They really more? don't. <laughs> Especially because she like there's so much there was like so much um controversy or like well like talk about her and the director getting into arguments who like because Oh really? Um she just wanted more creative control and she was like, No, we're gonna do it in this See? way, you know. That's why I think the, that's really hard because you have the director who has to like bring this book to life to please fans, but then also please this author who doesn't really know Sounds what like she's a doing. <laughs> like, yeah, like. Do they really need to please her? I mean, she sold the rights, right? Yeah, she sold the, but she wanted. I think she was wanted control, or she had some kind of like producer credit. I think mm. with it. It says she's in a formidable bargaining position. Yeah, how? And is strengthened. How did they let that happen? (laughs) Yeah, they fucked up. (laughs) I like like how this, a new director and writer are likely to be required. (laughs) And James flexing her muscles in early talks said to oh, that's so funny. A new director and writer are likely to be required. Current director and screenwriter magicked James's cloak cloth-eared dialogue and harmless <laughs> prose into effective characters. This is a funny article. By strong central performances. All right. I'm a Dakota fan. I mean, Dakota Fanny. Dakota Fanny. <laughs> Please. Ew. Oh, I can't the read it. <laughs> Damn it. I didn't want to think of her like that. That's, oh my God, my baby Dakota. Thank you. I mean, Dakota Johnson, I heard she did pretty well with what she's yeah, given. I'm surprised. Except I'm for, yeah, Jane, Jamie Dornan, they said that he's like just a wall. So, and I feel bad. <laughs> But I'm glad that Dakota to me, really was into this it. sounds like the Yale James really thinks that she's like has this really creative vision that she's created with these books, yeah. like and rather than them just being like fun, trashy romance what novels. She's like, she's like, I need creative control for my masterpiece. What if she's like, I think this is better than Twilight, and I think that I bet that what is what she thinks. She thinks it's better than Twilight. But you think Twilight is better? Than, it seems like better than this, even though that has problems. I mean, and I also don't think Stephanie Meyer thinks Twilight is like. That great. I don't know. Maybe. I feel so that's bad for her. Well, just right. a side thing. We, yeah, let's yeah, move on. Go. <laughs> Maya, do you want to talk about the really honest Oscar? Yeah. Let's okay. Take us in the lab. So, um, each year, a uh, Hollywood reporter comes out with this, like, brutally honest Oscar ballot about, um, they get Oscar, anonymous Oscar voters, Academy voters, and they talk about their, um, picks. And some of these are very rude, and some of them are very, like, sweet or whatever. But just a lot of times it just tells you. And a lot of these, there's a consensus of people p- picking films that they have not seen and just voting for them, which is, seems really problematic in a way because you have, like, the way that the Oscar voting goes is that everyone in each category sound votes for sound for nominations. Actors vote for actors. The actors is the largest branch, about 1,000 members or so. I think a little bit of that. Uh, a little bit over, but um, but then at the end when you after the nominations come out, every it's a free for all. Everyone mm. can v- pick for everyone. So some people have no idea like what they're you know picking for sound editing or sound mixing. They don't know the differences. A lot of you know you know actors don't know the differences between sound mixing and sound editing, which I found out. What is the difference? sound yeah. mixing? Is what happens on set. Like when you're sound mixing, you're doing the sound on set. Sound yeah. editing is when you're putting okay. it together and you're doing I the never following knew work. That. Which I was like trying to find out. <laughs> Thanks, you know, Thanks, internet. Maya. <laughs> so there you go. But yeah, there you go. Um, so people just don't know everything and they're just voting for whatever. So sometimes that seems like a really big you know, problem. And also a lot of these voting goes into a lot of them say, well, you know, I really don't like this actor. I've talked to him once and he's an asshole. So therefore I won't Uh, vote for him. You know, like instead of, you know, picking out the work or saying, well, or some of these votes are, you know, for the career of the, you know, the actor, like they've had a stunning career. They don't need it. No, they don't need it or Mm. they do need it because they've had this. And so, yeah, but like some highlights in the first one, um, we should talk about um, separating artists from the work. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. Um, so this first one was um, the first brutally honest one was from a public relations woman. I think. I think it's a woman. I think is this the first one the girl leads? Yeah. That's the first. That's the only one I read. Yeah, an anonymous female Academy member gives. So um, she was mad that people thought. Um, we didn't vote for, like, they didn't vote for Selma, that they were racist, and she says, 
she said, well, no one wants to say it out loud is that Selma is a well-crafted movie, but there's no art to it. If the movie had been directed by a 60-year-old white male, I don't think that people would have been carrying on about it to the level that it were. And as as far as the accusations about the Academy being racist, yes, most of the members are white males, but they're not the (laughs) cast of Deliverance. They had to get into the Academy to begin with, so they're not Christianist snaggletooth hillbillies. When a movie about black people is good, members vote for it. But if the movie isn't that good, and I... Am I supposed to vote for it because it has black people in it? And then she says, I've got to tell you, having the cast show up in T-shirts saying I can't breathe at their New York premiere, I thought that shit was a, stuff was offensive. Do they really want to be throwing, um, want to be known for making the best movie of the year or for stirring up shit? That was her <laughs> big thing. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dude, what? and that was like she stirring just up shit. stirring up shit. So there was a whole thing <laughs> where, and then like her picks for best picture was, like so, it's so long. Is um, her vote goes to the imitation game because she said that um, she doesn't want the. Yeah, she says, but I'm going to hold my nose and vote for it anyway because when you vote for best picture, what you should try to do is vote for the movie that from years from now people will still watch and talk about. So she doesn't. So I try to vote in a way so that in 50 years people aren't going to go, huh? So they're not confused by it. So she picked Imitation Game as her number one, followed by Birdman, American Sniper, Boyhood, and the Grand Budapest Hotel. So yeah, that was one. Um, okay. There's one. <laughs> this it's. If you guys have any comments what, while I find Why would else. she like the thing about if it were vo- or directed by a six year old white man? Like no one would consider it. Why would a six? The, th- the point is that a six-year-old white man doesn't. No one makes that. Wouldn't make that film. Yeah. Like. Or made it the way that she made it with yeah. all the like backings that she was right. able to. I'm come also with it. confused as to what they wore. Why does that have anything to do with whether you would vote for them or not? You mean the T-shirt? Yeah. She's oh, a, well, she's a yeah. PR person, so that's probably something that affects her in some kind of way. But I don't know, like, like I don't know. You, the, it's so hard about but you it's know. It's a political movie. It's yeah. not right. like the, you know. Yeah. Makes sense. Right. Because I think, she, like, I think automatically she's going to f- think that the whole point. It's she not, probably thinks matter, it's you know? to show that how much how little has changed. Yeah. 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 And so I don't if think she's right in the middle of yeah. this huge thing. <laughs> I like. <laughs> ignore, I think it would be worse to ignore yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think she's like saying basically, why are you stirring up shit? You know, we're not racist, but all this bullshit that you're doing, you know, does not make sense. You know, <laughs> like that whole like, I don't know. It's just ridiculous. Um, stirring up shit. Let's see. Uh, I can't believe she said that. <laughs> it's just so bad. I mean, she's not wrong. That is the point, but. Yeah. Let me see. I have to find. Um, so this one, I, I, um, this one, Brutal Oscar, Brutal Blue, Oscar Ballot. He's um, so this was an actor from this, yeah, an actor, and he said that, um, he, let's let's see, he says that he doesn't like Birdman. So I was wanted to figure <laughs> that out. But. All right, he doesn't like Birdman. So he says overall, I thought Selma was a very good movie, but it didn't blow me away. Birdman bored me to death. Although I could appreciate that Michael Keaton was brilliant. And then it says, um, so that's like one. But then he kept saying that, you know, I can't really find what was in here that was funny. Oh, the fifth one is hilarious. So <laughs> this guy is part of the sound branch. And he does not watch basically any single film that is, like, listed, which... Oh, and he keeps, re- he keeps like, me- messing up everyone's name while he's doing this. So this one is so funny. He goes, the imitation game was powerful. I mean, Cumberbuck. <laughs> I don't know how to say his name. Like, all these guys deserve an Oscar. I really like that movie. And then in the best actress, he goes, that Gutiard girl, which is Marion Cotillard. <laughs> and then, um, and he voted for um, Rosamund Pike for Gone Girl instead of Julianne Moore. And he says... Um, because he says Julianne Moore did a phenomenal, 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 phenomenal. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs> he said I didn't like the movie; it just de- it depressed the shit out of me. And he says it went real. I went with the real underdog. I liked Gone Girl. I didn't love the movie, and I thought she, Rosamund Pike, uh, Rosamund Pike, did a great job. So I voted for her. She did. She, she did. Fantastic. So this is what he said about the animated feature. 
which is really funny. Um, he's, he talks about the biggest nub for me was Chris Miller and Phil Lord not getting in for the Lego movie. Um, and he goes, when a movie is that successful and culturally hits all the right chords and does that kind of box office, for, the, for that movie not to be in, um, in over these two obscure freaking Chinese fucking things that nobody ever freaking saw. What? And then, <laughs> I love the, like, kind of the, you know, the things is like, an apparent reference to the Japanese film, The Tale of Princess Kaguya, as well as the Irish film, Song of the Sea. That is my biggest bitch. Most people don't even know what they were. How did this happen? To me, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. I'm like, well, you're the sound guy. Like, you're going to go with this I'm like, nomination. What are you? Oh, my God. But then... We'll just two more things. One is for the best foreign language film. He goes, I didn't get around to seeing any of them. You want the truth? I shouldn't have voted, but I did. This is bad. <laughs> but he saw like a cool fucking thing of a carcass, so he picked for a Russian film. And then this one for a documentary feature, he says, It gets worse for the same fucking reason. I didn't see any of the nominees, but goddamn, Varunga is a running commercials late night every freaking hour. And those gorillas, man, I was like, Wow, that looks heavy. I said, That looks good, and I voted for it. <laughs> Oh my yeah. god. Lol. <laughs> so this is how the Oscars get chosen. Yep. <laughs> By a sound guy that hasn't seen anything. And <laughs> he's, like, he's like, oh, the Cumber- gorillas. Cumberbuck. <laughs> <laughs> Benedict Cumberbuck. Wow. I guess if I like ever like felt like I deserved an Oscar and then I didn't get it, I would read these and feel better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The Academy, everyone. 6,000 members. <laughs> but, uh, so. Yeah, they gotta fix that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway, so um, that's yeah, a good way to frame our our going Oscar in. going into the Oscars. Remember that this is how they're getting chosen. Yeah, <laughs> so don't feel too bad. I mean, it gets exciting, but you know, some of these guys are fucked up. <laughs> I kind of want to be part of the academy. This is so like I how I like vote for ask. student senate. Like I look at the names, I'm like, oh, I like. I think just I know I know Lena Dunham was a part of the Academy. Really? Now. Yeah, because you've been like if you've done like a lot of significant work or whatever, you've been asked. So like, like you have to be asked. Yeah, so you I have think, to be asked. You can't just I join. I feel like there would be so many more people than six thousand then. Like did people die or something. Yeah. I feel like Robin's parents maybe are like in the Academy or something, or like they know someone in the Academy or something. I feel like you just have to live in LA. Because I know LA. Lena Dunham is. So I think Judd Apatow is. is. But they're for, like, specific parts, like, you know, writing or whatever, mm-hmm. like, you know. And if you're nominated, of course, you're into the Academy. You get into the Academy. But I think, like, Andrew Garfield's part of the Academy. Like, <laughs> if you're, like, in there, get in there. Wow. How could we never talk about actors voting in, in the Academy? Really yeah. Yeah, and they're Probably the biggest group, for, so. Probably just voting for their friends. Yeah, they're really, 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 I got you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> oh my goodness. I would love to go to those parties too. They just suck up to you so they can, you know. Uh-oh. I think mine turned off. Uh oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay. I'm back. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'm back, baby. Nothing happened. Don't okay, worry about it. Should we move on to your yes. box office? Oh, yes. That is mm-hmm. my job. I didn't look at it yet. But let's check it out. <laughs> We're going on to box office. Let There's me nothing see. like much. I got this Friday Not report that I put out. A Friday report? Yeah. Okay. It's, um, just go to, I think, the front of the box office. Um, Friday report. The Back daily in. Friday estimates? Mm hmm. All right. So we've got Fifty Shades of Grey leading the way with $80 million. No, eight million dollars. <laughs> eighty million dollars. I can't read numbers, you guys. What? This is oh. what the headline is. Oh, okay, so Friday. Friday report: Fifty Shades plummets, hot tub drowns. <laughs> <Really? laughs> <laughs> All right, so Fifty Shades of Grey has collapsed this weekend. It says, and hot tub time machine bombed. So they only added eighty million this Friday. Eight Which is eight million. I'm sorry. I keep, I, mean, no, I should never do box office again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, seventy four percent less off of its opening day. So I guess that's bad. But I mean, they're still making a lot of money. I feel like they're probably fine. So it's probably going to earn less than the original Twilight movie. Um, which doesn't surprise me. I mean, it's a rated R. Twilight was PG-13. Right. I mean, <laughs> what do you think? Which one was... Okay. <laughs> which one are you going to take your kids to? Yeah. The one about the dominatrix? Or, or the one about the old vampire? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess it's going to earn less than $24 million 
for the three or earned less than twenty four million for its opening weekend. Um, and then we've got coming in second place, Kingsmen Secret Service made around five million this weekend. Is that good? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just only Friday estimates, so you don't really know. You know, because okay. you know, like, it's only Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, it's only Usually Saturday. Usually we record on Sundays, so we don't really know yet. Yeah. And then third, we've got The Duff. I want to see that yeah. at 4270000 That's the movie with May Whitman. May Whitman. And she plays the designated ugly fat friend. If you don't know mm. what The Duff means, that's what it means. You get It's like pretty people pick a friend that's not as attractive to be their friend, so they cushion the blow. Awful concept. Yeah, it's yeah, this right. woman who made the the film. She's like she was she was really young. She's like twenty two, twenty three, and she made the book when she was twenty or eighteen or something like that, and got a lot of money and then got it sent. But yeah, it's okay. They, I think she finds herself. But May Whitman isn't ugly, so like yeah, I just, yeah, she, <laughs> I'm so confused. This is like a reach into the tough territory. <laughs> yeah. And then we've got Spongebob movie and McFarland USA. What is that? What is that? So I like that. Lance, uh... I think I said saw something. Is this the fucking... A movie about running? God damn it. Is that the cross-country running one? <laughs> <laughs> so That's Kevin... Co- Disney. Like Disney movie. Yeah. yeah Kevin Costner um, lives in Texas, I think, or presumably the Southwest, because there are a lot of Latino Americans. I think they're mostly Mexican-American. Oh, and no. And then he helps them. Get, you know, get in gear, get the butt in gear, and they start the running. And they just run. <laughs> and they cross country oh, running. Like my too, my favorite not. is just like how much it's like, there's like so many like things. You know, okay, there, there's this movie that Terrence Howard was in about, you know, black people trying to swim and they were wanting to be in swimming competi- competitions. And that was like a film, like, you know, you know, white people were like, get out of here, black people. <laughs> like, I just want to swim. And now it's like cross country. And the like, white people are like, get out of here. <laughs> we just want we just want to run. Oh my god! <laughs> it's so funny. Does he inspire them. Yeah, with yeah. his whiteness. Yeah, he's like uh, you can be. Like and there's you. also a scene in the trailer, which I just like only seen the trailer where you know he goes to their house, and then the mom is like, "You better eat this food," and he's like, "No, I'm not full." And he's like, "She's like, you better eat this food. You in my house? You gonna eat this food? That was a bad accent. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was offensive in so many ways. Our Latino, <laughs> our Latino fans, we're gonna lose like so many." <laughs> but don't see that movie it looks bad American Sniper got down to number 6 so bye feel good about that (laughs) (laughs) alright should we move on to uh, see white people scoop (laughs) (laughs) yes alright so Maya what do you think Okay. Oh, do you want to give the synopsis? Yeah. So we saw this on Wednesday. Um, they were playing one night only for Oberlin, which is good that they finally were able to get it. Um, I wish it was here for longer mm-hmm. uh, so a lot of people could see it. Um, so this is what they have for the little blurb on the internet. A campus culture war between blacks and whites at a predominantly white school comes to a head when the staff of a humor magazine stages an offensive Halloween party. And basically they're surrounded by about four, uh, four black students at this very white Ivy League college called Manchester. Um, yeah. Fake, fake Ivy League college. Fake Ivy League college. Manchester. Winchester. Winchester. Manchester. Yeah. Manchester. Sorry. <laughs> Winchester. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, they try to navigate that life. <clears throat> Should I just go? Or? No, so this is the second time I've seen this movie, and I really enjoyed watching it the uh, the second time a lot, especially with the audience. I think there was an audience that you need to that be there fun. and people, you know, doing their call and response to this um, film that it was made it more, much more enjoyable. And especially since we were in a school that was predominantly white, trying to watch it with a bunch of like other, like other people. Oh my God. I'm, like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just on an offensive role today. I'm just like going at it. Like <laughs> just with everyone like together is very interesting. And I, hopefully a lot of people take away a lot of things from that um yeah i like this film a lot i think this is a great first film mm. for justin simeon um and he got a writing nomination for the, oh no he got a writing award from this during sunday and how old is he 31 oh he's quite young he is quite young so <laughs> um so yeah i'm really like i just like it a lot i really enjoyed the characters i enjoyed that there's four different ones so we can kind of navigate this whole life and these different perspectives um I think a lot of the 
times it hit. There's some like jokes or some things that don't hit as much, mm. but um, it's not really like. I don't know. It's just like because it's so hard to be like I'm going to share the whole black experience with four different characters from four different sides. So sometimes, like the way that they set up jokes to make it seem like people were being completely ridiculous mm. seemed almost like out of like just like out of character in a way. You know, um, like I was when? thinking like sometimes like I know like you know when sometimes people are like that cannot possibly happen. Like I've never heard white people say ever say that right. before. But you know that it's happened right. before. But sometimes I was still still saying like no it wasn't. But I know it's been there to like enact the public to be like this could happen. You right. know? But like for me some there were some times that just didn't seem believable in like certain ways. Some of the racist things. Some of the racist things. things. But there were some racist things that I was like, yeah, it's on the point. And it was just exaggerated to make a point, you right. know? Like, I've seen, um, especially with Lionel, who is, he is a gay black guy, but he doesn't fit in with um, black people a lot. And he's been always with white people, and he just doesn't think black people relate to him a lot. Um, and the, when they go in to touch his hair, mm-hmm. and they, like, put their, his hand, their hands, like, all the way in, <laughs> I was like... I know, I feel like it could happen, but, like, damn, like, that's, like, a line, especially in college, that yeah. seems like a line is Someone crossed. in the theater was just, like, stop. Yeah. <laughs> but one of my favorite parts is when they're kind of walking away, and they're going to the party, mm-hmm. and you can just, like, you, she's standing there, yeah. and you, like, you see the hand, and So, yeah, I was thinking, like... I'm writing a review for Fearless and Loathing, so you check that out when it comes out. But I was thinking, like, who do I identify with the most during this film? And I really do de- identify with Lionel a lot. You don't feel like you're part of everything. You don't feel like you should be, like, should I be in it? Should I not? Should I try to separate myself? And coming to acceptance with, in your own way, I think that was really great. Um, but every all the characters had, like, points and figures to... Um, what is it um, to relate to? Um, it reminded me a lot of, you know, Spike Lee movies, uh, like had a lot of odes to that kind of style mm-hmm. of school days and do the right thing of this mm-hmm. in your face. And I think some people would not, you know, of course didn't like, you know, wouldn't like that kind of style, like in your face, um, especially with the title being dear white people. I know a lot of people were like really upset with calling it dear white really? people. Yeah. I think there was uh, some of my friends were, and then like, which I mean, they're not really my friends, <laughs> but like just people were just upset by that. Like, especially on the internet, you can even see it on here. Like the differences between IMDb rates and like the Rotten Tomatoes, like Rotten Tomatoes, 92%. Dear white people on IMDb, 6.3 out of 10, which, mm. you know, you can vote yourself, which mm-hmm. means that, you know, some people had some, you know, things, but yeah, overall great movie. Um, I think it's really great for people who are young, who are, you know, young black kids will completely relate to it. Um, everyone can relate to it in some point. And I just think it's an important movie, especially in the way um, how race is talked about now and how race is, mm-hmm. um, you know, is developing racial issues is developing throughout, you know, the multimedia web. So... It's good for the internet generation, for those millennials. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know awesome. who they are. Um, great. And mm-hmm. Anna, do you want to give your... Sure. Oh, what do you... Yeah, so what's what your you C? Oh, I would say C. Yeah. It's all on, like, DVD, I okay, think, now, on and on um, iTunes, so see it. Oh, it's if it's on DVD, you can also probably find it online. Yeah, it's online now. It's on streaming, so... But we don't, we don't do, do that. that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to do <laughs> it's on yeah, it's on iTunes. So if you grab at it, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I really, really enjoyed this film, and I encourage everyone to see it if you can. If your college is doing a screening like ours did, definitely try to go see it. I think it's a really important film for white people to see, especially like me, white person, but <laughs> like. It's just, like, all these things that you think are of, like, people saying, like, racism doesn't exist anymore. This is, like, a really good, like, catalog of, like, subtle and not-so-subtle racisms that happen every day that it's just good to be aware of and know about, and this is an important film to see. I really like the characters. I want this to be a TV show, like, so I can watch these characters all the time. You know, actually, I read an article with Justin talking about how he wants this to go like on more on mm. TV he, and I was like ah 
Who were you talking about at last? So that would be great. I mean, great. it'd be a miracle if they got that to happen. Yeah. I don't know if they would get that to yeah. happen. I think it's so great that this film got made. I you, what they have like a two million dollar budget or something. Do you know what their yeah. budget was? Ooh, I don't know. Because like you that. can tell that it was kind of a low budget film, which doesn't surprise me at all. It doesn't surprise me that people didn't want to give money to make this movie. It was crowdsourced. Um, online right you said that with the trailer came coming first yeah, the concept trailer and then it was crowdsourced because a lot of people were you know worked up by the controversy mm. of the title but people were really into the dear white people so they like had at it see. i'm hoping that this seems like just like hopefully the first of more movies like this yeah but what's their budget it doesn't say, it doesn't say. So there are some, like, moments where you can tell that they made it quickly and on a low budget, I felt like, which makes total sense. Um, that, like, maybe detracted from the quality of it a little, but the characters and the yeah. writing. One how much million. is it? One, One million? million? That is an insanely low budget. Mm-hmm. So, um, so, yeah, I say was, go see it. It's our last movie that we saw. It was, like, a hundred million. Oh, Jupiter Ascending? Mm-hmm. Probably. Yeah, 160 something million. So if you think about how much they did with that little yeah. amount of money. Impressive. And the yeah. quality of writing. Yeah, and the acting, the <laughs> acting and writing. Yeah. The acting and writing really mm-hmm. were really good, especially Lionel and Sam. I thought they were the best. Um, my favorite moment of the film, I think, might have been when the Dean of Students is like chewing out his son for smoking weed and writing jokes in the bathroom or something and it's just like a really emotional scene like for some reason that was the scene that hit me the hardest when like the dean of students is like starting to like get all emotional about like he's like you will not be like the stereotypes that people think that you're gonna be and i was like oh my gosh it's this fine line between respectability politics Mm. and just like complete truth and he's talking about the fact that he you know graduated with honors and and his rival mm-hmm. um, was like s- trying to scrape by and that he's the right. Yes, student. And mm-hmm. it's, it's yeah. So it's a difficult balance because you want to kind of chew him out and be like, just let this kid do what he wants to do. Right. But you, it's like that great um, scene in Scandal where he, the uh, Olivia's father is talking to her. Oh, and he's yes. like, You have to be. Like, what is it like? Um, twice as good. Twice as twice good. Twice as good. Twice as good. Yeah. That just have, really hit me. Or something like that. And yet you still get the net. You still get. Oh, you don't deserve to be here. Oh, it's you just got in because of um, affirmative action. Mm-hmm. So even if you are two times better, you're still fine. Yeah. That mm-hmm. just really hit me. Like how much pressure that character was going through. Mm-hmm. Anyways, it's a great movie, and it's a funny movie too. Like it's about important a lot of important things, but it was also, like, hilarious. There was a lot of funny jokes, and it was just a fun movie to watch, especially in a group. So I say definitely see it. Um, I guess it's on DVD, so go do it. Mm -hmm. Rosie? My turn. Um, Okay, I want to start this off with a Gina Diaz quote. (laughs) Here we go. I love him, and I think it's really applicable here. Um, So Diaz says... You know, you guys know about vampires. You know, vampires have no reflections in a mirror. There's this idea that monsters don't have reflections in a mirror. And what I've always thought isn't that monsters don't have reflections in a mirror. It's that if you want to make a human being into a monster, deny them at the cultural level any reflection of themselves. Mm. And growing up, I felt like a monster in some ways. I didn't see myself reflected at all. And I was like, yo, is something wrong with me? That whole society seems to think that people like me don't exist. Um, and part of what inspired me was this deep desire that before I died, I would make a couple of mirrors, that I would make some mirrors so that kids like me might see, see themselves reflected back and might not feel so monstrous for it. So that's one of my yeah. favorite quotes, possibly of all time. Juno Diaz has a few quotes that are just, I think, golden and so applicable to my life in particular. And um, growing up, I definitely felt that. I felt like I didn't see myself in any sort of media that I was I was watching and so that's why that's why this film meant so much to me and I think on that basis alone I probably would have enjoyed it either way because it wasn't it wasn't 
at its root, it wasn't about black people in pain or just laughing at black people, which I feel like is the majority mm-hmm. of black yeah. media at the moment. <clears throat> um, and it was really just a story that, like, yes, is centered around race, but there are these fleshed out characters and interesting, complex characters. Mm. And it really had, like, the most nuanced view of race that I've ever seen in, in like, pretty much any sort of media, but That's definitely true. in movies. Mm-hmm. Um, and... So, yeah, I definitely really, really liked this movie. I thought, I mean, I had some I had some issues with it, mostly like narrative-wise, but I, I understand that they were, like, working with the budget, and it was a pretty short film. Um, and so, uh, but, yeah, I think, I think it was great, and I think it was really important, like Anna said, um, it was for white people, and I think it was. I mean, it's called Dear White People, but I think it's also, you know, for us, you know, people of color, but particularly black people. And uh, I, I really felt that when we, we watched it in the theater and we were just, like Maya said, the, the call and response just felt, it was, it just made me feel really, really good. And like, I was a part of something I got to see myself. And so, yeah, I think it is a really important piece of media. and. Yeah, <laughs> getting emotional. Um, and I also, I just think that it does a really good job of dealing with microaggressions in particular, mm-hmm. which is one of the things that we talk a lot about here at Oberlin, mm-hmm. but I know that a lot of people don't in other places, and I definitely didn't even understand what microaggressions were, and it's still kind of hard to explain right? Mm-hmm. Um, if you don't, which, which is why I think this movie is so good, because it does a really good job of, of showing rather than, like, telling. Um and so, like, one of the microaggressions that they, they talk about a lot is, like, or they don't talk about, but you can see it, is the touching hair thing. <laughs> and this idea that, like, black hair and black bodies are, one, yours to just kind of touch without consent. Mm-hmm. And even, you know, though the, the girl who does it does get consent, it's definitely dubious consent. Right. Um, and, and just the idea of, like, marking black bodies as exotic and... Yeah, I, I just like that a lot. And I got a lot of that growing up. Um, you know, oh, I wish I had your hair. And then I would counter it with, no, you don't really. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and, yeah, I thought it was funny. I definitely laughed more this time than I did last time. And I think that part of that was the, the audience we were with. But I, I just, I think that the way that they marketed it was much more as a comedy mm. than it really was. Um, or it was a less traditional comedy. Or the, mm-hmm. the things that you laughed at weren't, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, I, I would agree with the, tra- like, it's not traditional yeah. comedy. Yeah. I think because it's not making fun of, it's not making fun of the people who are there. It's making exactly. fun of the situations that are going on with them. Because I never, I think no one made fun of Lionel like, people liked his expressions, but expressions to what was going on and right. how he was feeling, we were feeling exactly the same Yeah, moment. he was the relatable. Like. Yeah, he was the relatable. I know, like, everyone was so into his, <laughs> like, his whole story and, like, him coming to, like, his own doing the story. Which but that's, nice. like, that was one of the things that was so great that it was, like, the relatable characters are the black characters. Right. Mm-hmm. The jokes are flipped. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's making fun of the people. Yeah. Yes, it's why people had a problem with it, but it's also why I... I they could have they could have liked on so much worse, though, I feel like. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to talk about was intersectionality and the fact that, like, Lionel existed and that he... Well, I get, does he identify as gay? We know that he's... I think so. I think so. I think he's, yeah. like... I don't know. He never was like told told anybody that he was gay. I feel like but. I think he had to like cover it up so he wasn't. Well, I, I feel know like he's not straight. But yeah, yeah what I'm saying. I'm not like yeah. So yeah, and and I just I appreciated the fact that they included that because I think gay people of color are mm-hmm. um, massively underrepresented. So that was just another a cherry on top of the fun day. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think. Yeah, I think that's that's all I have to say. Oh, obviously, my I would say see it. I think everyone should mm-hmm. see it. I think it's a really important movie to see. And that's my review. Yeah, I really liked. Um, I just like the scenes. 
like a couple of scenes that I really liked. One it was the tipping scene. I really like that tipping scene when they like go from the book hmm, yeah. to the tipping scene <laughs> and just like the A and then like I thought that was a really cool yeah. um tool. And then I've also um there's a part when the white kid who is um throwing this party called uh, I forgot what his name is. Uh, Kurt, whatever. Um, and he is the one who's the head of this house that throws this, you know, really offensive party. And he goes and sits at Armstrong Parker, which is the house that is mostly uh, for black students and people of color. And um, he says, you know, I think that... Well, I forgot. I don't know the exact term, so I'm paraphrasing. But it's like... Um, I think the people who are the most, oh, yeah. you know, oppressed and, like, now in today is the educated white man and some like everyone was like oh like in the audience but then someone at the like end of that oh was like oh my god oberlin boys like right at the end like i just heard it and it was so good it was so on point and it was everyone it was just like ah because <laughs> it's true that's why i think yeah it's really important for like white people and white men especially to see this movie and like see themselves and hear how ridiculous they sound to yeah. everybody especially like liberal yeah white the liberal people. yeah because, like it, this is was like this is i think a lot of it was about liberal white people mm-hmm. because i mean you have young and people educated. and educated because this is you know this wasn't talking about you know the quote-unquote you know racist you know right. conservative right. like this background like southern southern mm-hmm. whatever which is in itself kind of, you know, its own thing. But, like, this was actually, you know, from a nor- new, like a New England high educated place that people have to, you know, that they have and to wealthy. deal with this. And wealthy. Yeah. So this is what, you know. Racism isn't just coming from, like, the poor people in the yeah. South. Yeah. It's I coming from all different directions. At times it can be a little bit like But What do you mean? I, you know, like, over-explaining what, for example, when Sam is talking to the dean of students, mm-hmm. and he's like, your show is racist. And she's like, black people can't be racist. And that explains the whole system. And I was yeah. like, on the one hand, we feel like that's totally obvious. Mm-hmm. And yet, we still get people who think that. And I don't, mm-hmm. I didn't necessarily think that the dean of students really would believe that. You're right. Because yeah. you know, Sam is too smart to believe yeah. that. <laughs> Um, but yes, yeah, so that was one of the instances where I was like, all right, but it's also very in character because Sam like seems to not be able to, um, stop explaining this stuff to people. I feel that. I yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like her character a lot too. Yeah. The, the Tessa Thompson who plays Sam White. Great. She was very good. There were so many scenes where she was like under, you felt the like inner like conflict that she yeah. was having, especially when she was with the president and talking and oh, she was wow. like about to cry, but she kept it together. And it was such a like, m- like really strong performance in that scene. Yeah. A lot of like great all around. All right. So do we want to do, <laughs> I like how you're like, have it ready to go. I'm ready. <laughs> so Anna, Anna wants to copy off my prediction for the Oscars. <laughs> I want to win um, that uh, Apollo gift card. I don't know how, long, how long do we have. Um, um, I don't know. I started recording early. So we're over an hour, but I probably started recording like 15 minutes before. So really? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I wanted to get something good for the intro. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> what did we say? <laughs> um, we're like, I hate this person and this person. <laughs> um, so I guess we're just going to do a whole thing where we say like who we think should win. Uh, well, no, like we're talking we, about the Oscars. Yeah. Now, Oscars. Up. Sorry. <laughs> you back to the Oscars. If you would just say like who you would like to win this, yeah. if the world was right and you were the one to vote for the, <laughs> well, not even because of that, just because I haven't seen them. Yeah. Right. Or you haven't so, seen them. So I, I guess it's just me. It's just going to be about me and my <laughs> yeah. feelings right now. So this is so, the my, welcome to Maya wild. dig flicks. <laughs> 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 um, it's Saturday today. The Oscars are tomorrow. Yeah. Nice. Oscars is tomorrow. I don't know. Should I try to get this episode out before the Oscars come out? You can. I'll, I'll see what I can do. Yeah. We'll see when we'll you're s- listening to this. We'll see when it comes <laughs> you probably, out. You might already know who won by the time you listen yeah, to this. Yeah, by the time you want, listen to this. Oh, okay. So I'm a big boyhood fan. And boyhood. this is like this is like a whole thing. I'm very big at boyhood fan. Wait, let's read. What are That's the nominations the for best picture? So read best, us the nominations. Okay, so best picture. Um, we're just gonna go down through this list. Best picture: American Sniper, Birdman, Boyhood, The Grand Budapest Hotel, The Imitation Game, Selma, The Theory of Everything, and Whiplash. 
Um, so my top films that I've seen, I've only seen seven of the, I mean, six of the eight. I have not seen American Sniper, but I'm kind of like declining to see that. And The Theory of Everything, which I just haven't got, uh, got to. I just missed it uh, when it came, like left the theater. So my like top is Boyhood. Mm. I think Boyhood is such an incredible film, and I think it's different from what the films have been, you know, coming out about like you know historical or you know background. Boy. But it's just about like this like life, which is very hard to do. It's very hard to you know do a life and then <clears> be <throat> able to showcase that. Um, so Boyhood is my top. I would love you know also if in a world where Whiplash and Selma could be you know number ones, that would be my world too do you have anything um, or? I, let's see I so I saw Boyhood Selma Grand Budapest and Theory of Everything um yeah I'm gonna I hope Boyhood wins too I really liked Boyhood I feel like it has a good chance too yeah it might win it's, that might be my yeah. vote it's the battle between Birdman and Boyhood but mm-hmm. I am now securing my vote this is my secured vote because I've been like debating this whole entire week you're voting for gonna, Boyhood okay so I'm voting for Boyhood got it Got it down. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. I just want to win. I do, and I'm going to win, win that. So she's cheating. So Maya's hosting if any, if I get that. Oh, yeah, I'm hosting the Oscar party along with the Oberlin Film Series, and I'm doing trivia and stuff, which I still need to do. I need to do a lot of things. I'm not going to get anything done this, this next day. So can you, you can probably – maybe you can just find some trivia online. I did that, yeah, like, but oh, I need okay. to write them down mm-hmm. and make sure – and I, but I was going to do something different. Whatever. Okay, Best Actress. So we have Julianne Moore for Still Alice, Reese Witherspoon for Wild, Rosamund Pike for Gone Girl, Felicity Jones for The Theory of Everything, and Marion Cotillard for Two Days, One Night. So I've only seen Wild and Gone, Gone Girl. Mm-hmm. I, I did not like, I did oh, not I like uh, Wild. Um, Reese Witherspoon was all right. The movie was all right. So um, I know Julianne Moore is going to win this. So okay. that's a lock. It's been a lock. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh it's, it's been a lock so that's it but I would I loved if uh, Rosamund Pike got some love yeah she was, she was great, great. she was fantastic like she just really I was like I wasn't really worried like I guess I was worried because I didn't really know her as an actress but then when she came into it and was completely killed it so yeah I think great. she sh- I think I don't I guess if it's locked it's locked Maya says it's locked it's locked but I think it, she just has such an interesting role, like, different kinds of acting. I feel like Best Actress, it's usually like, oh, you know, the actress was really sad about something. She yeah. had struggled. She cried a lot. But, like, Rosamund Pike, or Rosamund Pike does a lot of, like, different kind of acting. Yeah, it's different. she's not sad. She's, like, she makes, psychotic. She, yeah, she makes, moment. like, she's yeah. against what people, like, we're not yeah. rooting for her yeah. in this yeah. movie. We're in, so that's, like, a really interesting... Because, like, Felicity Jones in Theory of Everything, she was good, but she was just, like, struggling. Like, Stephen Hawking is her husband, so she's just like, yeah. no. And mm-hmm. it's Who's, like, who the regular. was it? Like, it, yeah. like, I think it was, you know, Rosamund's. That's true. All right. But Julia Moore has not won an Oscar. I found never? that out. She's never won no. an Oscar. So I'm, like, so glad that she's going to win one because she <laughs> yeah. needed to win one. What happened? Yeah. The Academy? Like, what the hell? She's been, like, yeah. forever and such a good, like, amazing so, actress yeah, that, good. like, finally. I'm so so I'm glad that she's she'll, she's going to win for the first time. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> best actor the goes clock. Michael Keaton. Uh, so best actor is Michael Keaton for Birdman, Eddie Redmayne for The Theory of Everything, Benedict Cumberbatch or Cumberbuck. <laughs> your invitation game Steve Carell Foxcatcher Bradley Cooper American Sniper interesting that Bradley Cooper has, this is his third nomination in the in three years um, I don't think he's been marketed in any of them well, right. well, like, Silver Linings Playbook Silver American Lines. Hustle American oh Sniper. right American Hustle so that's really interesting that he's like <laughs> he won't win though right like, damn I don't Nobody's think he's not like, going oh he's doing a serious movie now they're like yeah. good for you <laughs> look at you like, look at you um, so I mean, I don't think this one's hard. Movie. So this was really hard. I don't know. I, I didn't like Birdman, Birdman that lot, but uh, Birdman a lot. But you think I think he's gonna win. Yeah, I think Michael Keane's gonna win. Um, I think Eddie Redmayne like has a chance for the upset. Like he has a really mm. strong chance for an upset. So if he does like win. I'm. I, I mean, I will be surprised, but I wouldn't be surprised. Like it's like oh, yeah. so. it was a pretty he's young. He's young. Yeah, he's gonna he have time, young. but he definitely. He's like one of the really like close like, and it was a pretty intense and role like intense you know playing a paraplegic yeah. and he's charming and he the people love him so yeah. they really the freckles know, the freckles you know the freckles. And, <laughs> yeah um so, yeah, we'll give those freckles an oscar so best supporting yeah, actor an oscar for Jupiter Ascending. yes i actually <laughs> right. want that to yeah. be so i'm sorry I'm, we're gonna wait for next year when 
how he says all those lines. We're waiting next year for those. Okay, so Best Supporting Actor, J.K. Simmons, Whiplash, Edward Norton, Birdman, Ethan Hawke, Boyhood, Mark Ruffalo, Foxcatcher, and Robert Duvall, The Judge. Um, the lock is J.K. Simmons for Whiplash. Okay. He's won everything. It's locked. You know, everything. I would have loved Ethan Hawke to win. Um, he won't, Ethan Hawke was I don't like, think. he's really great, but he's not going to win. Like, Whiplash, J.K. Simmons made that movie himself. Like, he was that movie. So, that's what the That's movie. what that is. That's what it is. All right. Best Supporting Actress, Patricia Arquette for Boyhood, oh, Emma Stone I for wins. Birdman, Kira Knightley, The Imitation Game, Meryl Streep, Into the Woods, Laura Dern, Wild. Laura Dern didn't do anything in this movie. I'm so upset. Like, I, why is Wild getting so much love for this movie? <laughs> like, okay, um, Patricia Arquette's going to win. She, she's okay, been winning cool. everything, too. Locked in. She was great. Yeah, she, she was deserves great. that for sure. That, okay, that last scene where she, like, says, like, you know, I've like every like her life goes by, and she's like, I don't know if, what I've done with my life. It's like a mm-hmm. really that's her like Oscar moment. My mom was like, that was her the moment that like made her feel like she was like that really makes it because you like your life goes by and you have these two kids and you're raising them and then all of a sudden they're going to college and what are you like? Yeah. What is my life now? Like I don't yeah. have anything. Which, and she's like, she was a kind of complex character because like she, I feel like she was kind of unfair to her son in some ways, but like you understand. I don't yeah. know. It was hard. She was struggling as a single mother, going right. through all these different relationships and yeah. all these moves. And so I, I really liked it. And I thought, like, even that scene with her at the end was really effective. Get them out of the house. Oh she yeah. Used to leave the other kids. Oh, oh wow! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I my thought God. she was gonna go back, and then I she didn't. Like she, but she couldn't. Yeah. She was, yeah. That was the worst thing. And I was like, because every, I think I was on like message boards like. Like, would they go back? Would they find them? It's like, they probably did, maybe on Facebook or some kind of media thing, but like, but that was really painful when she left the. Oh, man. Um, Um, You know what else she was in? She was kissing Kate Barlow in Holes. I love that movie. Yes. Yes, Holes. Good movie. Anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Best director, uh, Richard Linklater for Boyhood. Yeah, he's got it. Alejandro Gonzalez (laughs) Inarito for Birdman. Wes Anderson for The Grand Budapest Hotel. Morton Tildum for The Imitation Game, and Bennett Miller for Foxcatcher. What the fuck? Okay, so um, <laughs> so Richard Linklater is my pick. Um, it's between him and in, 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 in Alejandro for Birdman. So it's between them, but I think Linklater is going to get it because okay. to make a project where you're going to have 12 years yeah. and come back to it each year and like refocus everyone and put them on the yeah that's is, him he did that yeah he did that and he's been doing so many what like he needed to win I think for like the before series oh he so, didn't win like no he's never like gone anything for those and I think he deserved it so mm-hmm. let's give him some love and you're talking about gimmicks earlier and I feel like that's a gimmick with boyhood the whole yeah the whole 12 years, years is a but gimmick. I mean that is a pretty but good, it's a good one. one yeah and Birdman was the a one shot like oh it was one shot well it was supposed to be was allusion to one shot it was oh, made like a one but it shot wasn't but one shot. yeah okay. there's like three or four four or five cuts in the film wow that's still pretty wow. yeah pretty yeah like impressive. if you see it it just keeps i didn't going realize that and it goes back and it's really it's really great so like he used a gimmick that was very well done and you don't know if, but um i'll try maybe i'll try to watch that. if he wins then you know like if uh, Birdman wins, then you know whatever. But I think Richard Linklater should get it. Did um, Jeff Pence ever make you watch Russian art? Yes, Jeff Pence, oh, made our yeah. our Oberlin Cinema Studies that was my professor, to made Oberlin. us watch. <laughs> yeah, Freshman right. Day. Oh right. Oh right. We're made, in the same yeah, class. made us watch that oh, terrible three hour. I felt like it was probably also that, but it yeah, felt like, like three like hours. One shot. one shot, but nothing happens. They just but, move through like a museum, and like nothing goes on. Yeah. I've seen a little bit of it. Yeah, that's all you need. You don't uh, need the Nothing movie. happens. You have to watch it all? I don't know. <laughs> Jeff Pence, Jeff Pence is, he hates enjoyment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> best adapted screenplay. Um, Graham Moore, The Imitation Game, Anthony McCartan, The Theory of Everything, Damien Chazelle, Cazelle, Whiplash, Jason Hall, American Sniper, Paul Thomas Anderson, Inherent Vice. Well, probably be American so, Sniper. So I think either between American Sniper, okay, this is really hard. So I don't want to vote for American Sniper. I think it's either American Sniper, <laughs> The Imitation voting, Game, but. or Whiplash. Like these are the three. I've seen a lot of love for Whiplash. Um, I've seen a lot of love for the theory of everything in the Imitation Game. I haven't seen I think any. I think a lot for Imitation Game. So, ooh, I'm going to say. This is going to be fuck up. I'm going to be so upset if I fuck up. 
I'm going to say imitation game. You're going to say be, imitation game? That's going to be my pick. I might put down whiplash. <laughs> like, I'm not plagiarizing you. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to say imitation game, but... All right. I might change this, actually. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, best original. Um, so all these people for Birdman, like three people... Richard Linklater for Boyhood, Wes Anderson and Hugo Guinness, The Grand Budapest Hotel, Dan Gilroy for Nightcrawler, Dan Futterman and X E Max Futterman. Fry um, for Foxcatcher. So I love Dan Gilroy's Nightcrawler. I thought that was a great film. Um, but I think it's going to go to Wes about, Anderson. Yeah, it's got to go to Grand Budapest. It's going to go to Grand he Budapest. He always wins best original. I don't think favorite. Boyhood, like, I think Boyhood's good, but, like, I, I'm, like, good for it's them. It's not but for it's, the screenplay. But it play. seems like a... It was, like, improv. improv yeah. It seemed, like, so, like, real that it didn't seem. No. Um... I don't know how many you want me to do. Let's, well, no, we can. See. I'm okay. I just like I'm really confused why Interstellar's not on there. Oh, I don't get it. I think. I mean, I think people were just fed up with. <laughs> I don't know if they just like what fed up with do? Christopher Nolan or uh, they just fed up with. <laughs> but I think Birdman's going to win for cinematography. If okay. you want to ask me, so that's probably enough. We can stop there, yeah. right? Yeah, we can stop there. I think did you want to like, pick your animated feature? Oh, shit. I don't even know. Like, I didn't see any of these films. Um, oh, I saw How to Train Your Dragon 2. Yeah. But I think I either it's going to be between that film and Big Hero yeah, 6. Yeah, I was thinking it'll be Big Hero 6. So I'm just going to go Big Hero I'm going to put Big Hero 6. And I guess film editing, I'm going to say Boyhood. Because how do you edit so much film mm, into, tw- like, a two a and point. a half hour thing? So I'm going to say Boyhood. Um... I think the listeners should know that I'm filling out my printed-off Oscars ballot, yeah. which you, too, can fill out if you like the Overland Film Series. Okay. Yeah, if you um, want to get a gift card, if you're listening to this before, if you want to get a gift card by 8.30 p.m. Sunday. Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. That is the 22nd, 22nd of February. 22nd of February. In the year of our Lord. <laughs> the, year of our, the year of the goat. It's the new Lunar New Year. The lunar new year. Um, so we have, uh, we have Oscar ballot. So you can win a $15 Apollo gift card. All right. Which would be great. Cool. We should probably wrap up. All right. So we got anything going on campus? Well, we got the Oscar Oscars party. Oscar There's like tomorrow. some documentary. I cannot. It's about this Ethiopian. Ethiopian, oh right on Monday. An Italian filmmaker. Let me look who that talks up. About, um, I have that in my email. I think it's. For I want to see. Black History it. Month. Yeah, it's for Black History Month. He's doing two films. Oh, Fred Pujo one. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think there's a film tomorrow night uh, at seven and die lecture hall, which is in the Science Center. Um, uh, but let me confirm that. Right, no, it's Monday. Oh, it's Monday. Right, Monday night. My bad. Monday eight to ten. Oh. Monday, Eight to ten, ten not seven. Is that in Die Lecture Hall? Yes, it's in Die Lecture Hall in the Science Center. And Maybe I'll try to go to that. Tuesday, because there's a meeting with students and a sneak peek of black exploitation. Oh, that's not like. Is that a film about black exploitation? No, it's about a film. I think about Italians. Like, Italian influence of black blue, blue. Wow. I think it might be something like that, that or something. I thought the Italian in, was for the first one on Monday. No, he's doing two different oh, films okay. about... It's, like, Italian... Like, a, like a do- documentary about Italy. Which I really want to see the first one. I don't know if I'm able to or not, because that one's really... I, like, You've about been the to imi- Italy. Yeah, I've been to Italy. And uh, the immigration, um, like... Uh, situations have been really increasing when I was there because there was a, a thing about Lampedusa about these island off the coast of Sicily where people from Tunisia and Libya were coming there oh. and like staying there. So that's what the movie's about. So I don't know if it's it probably be about that. Like it seems like it's about like young young uh, like kids and how they fit in. But like that was a big major yeah. event. Moderated by Grace on. I love how lovely. February twenty second on the Oscar. I mean, up- upcoming events for the Digest. It has watched the Oscars with the Overland Film Series. <laughs> Yay, me! <laughs> I think in the review. It's in the review. Yeah, she is. She, yes, she's the everything. review has it. It says. <laughs> You're famous. You made the review. Yep, I made the review. So. Oh, by the way, shout out to, if she listens, Madeline. Madeline? Madeline. Madeline. For Madeline. Fearless and Loathing. Yes! Oh, thank, you so much. thank you. We thank love you. it. Thank you um, for helping us out. Uh, shout out to you. I was going to say the shout whole out fearless to loathing someone else, crew. but I can't remember. Oh, and then there's another. Does that include us? <laughs> oh, yeah, you guys, you guys are right for it. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> shout out We're to you guys. We're just being weird now. <laughs> <laughs> there's another They're screening awesome. on Tuesday, the February 24th, 8 to 10 p.m., inside Buffalo, Die Lecture Hall, moderated by Caroline Jackson-Smith. I think this is another one of Fred... Yes. 
cool news films. So check out those. Um, and then there's Whiplash and uh, Kingsman Service Kingsman and, and Birdman playing at the Apollo. I don't know how long they're playing for. Look it up. Hopefully they're playing for like a couple of weeks. Hopefully Whiplash is playing for a couple of weeks. You want to review it. I want to review it. Okay, yeah, I'd like to see so, it. So, um... Review what? Whiplash? Review okay. Whiplash. Um, if it's so, still there next week. So, yeah. So, check out films. It's a great time Watch for films. films. Watch time. films. Have fun at the Oscars. Yep. Not at the Oscars, you won't be there. But have fun watching them with me. <laughs> <laughs> Follow me on Twitter. Fill out your ballots. <laughs> you can listen to this and copy Maya's ballot, as I did. Yeah. <laughs> Don't copy my ballot. <laughs> go and find someone else's ballot online and, and copy that. Go ahead and copy Maya's ballot. <laughs> Listeners. Okay, hey. I'm not fit. Do you have an outro? <gasps> Do you have an outro? <gasps> no. No, no, no. Let's not do that. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> No, no. I'm going to stop recording. I'm going to stop recording. Bye. Bye. Bye.